According to the State of Uganda's Population Report 2012, about 78% of Ugandan population is under 30 years, making it the youngest nation in the world. The National Youth Policy defines the youth as those aged between 12 and 30 years, and they make up 21% of the entire population. Like most developing countries, Uganda is no exception to the multiple challenges its youth face, ranging from poverty, unemployment, ill health, violence and delinquency. Although the passing of both the National Youth Council Statute 1993 and subsequently the Local Government Act 1997 by Parliament effected the election of youth representatives from grassroots to national level and legislature, Trend analysis of involvement and participation in leadership and decision-making continues to show that the youth are significantly marginalized and their involvement seem only as a beneficiary of programs or services rather than as active participants in the development process. In the run to 2011 elections, Uganda Youth Network engaged in a national consultative process involving over 3,000 youth in this country. And the result of that process gave birth to what we now call the National Youth Manifesto. The National Youth Manifesto spells out four critical issues of demands that young people are engaging with the current leadership. And one of the key demands among the four is uh, youth participation in decision making and representation at all levels of governance and development processes. It is against this background that the European Union accepted to co-fund a two-year project named Hours by Right, Participation of Youth in Democratic Governance. This was done under the Democratic Governance and Accountability Program, DGAP. The key interest of the European Union in financing that particular project stems from the, uh, the fact that the European Union attaches a lot of importance to effective participation of the youth in the governance and democratization process and more specifically in the leadership processes. The British Council co-funded and took up overall responsibility for implementation of the project. The British Council is a, a cultural relations organization and is a cultural relations organization working in Uganda where 75% of the population is below the age of 24, if I'm not mistaken, around 50% um, below the age of 15. We feel it's very important to engage with youth and youth networks. What we're trying to do in this project is encourage youth to participate in community issues, um, participate in the democratic governance process because of the sheer numbers of youth and perhaps in some contexts, in many contexts, they uh, maybe per perhaps weren't aware of their rights and weren't participating as much as we, you know, they would like to participate because they didn't know how to and they didn't know where to and they didn't know what to do. British Council identified Uganda Youth Network, UONET, as the most appropriate civil society organisation to partner with in the implementation of the project. Um, Uganda Youth Network is um, it's a national level youth network uh, that brings together youth NGOs or CSOs from across the country. Um, we picked you on it particularly because we could reach many more districts across the country, but also because we could work with many more people through them, many more youth CSOs through them than working with just a single uh, youth CSO, for example. Nebi, Apache, Palisa and Busheni were the four districts identified for implementation of this project. One factor that we clearly looked into in terms of making choices for districts to work in under this project was to have a fairly uh, regional representation. And also another factor that we, we put into consideration while choosing these districts is one, we wanted to operate in the district where Uganda Youth Network already has presence. Uganda Youth Network identified other local civil society organizations in the four districts to work with in mobilizing the target beneficiaries as well as benefiting from the training themselves. In each district we have been working with an average of about, uh, of about 35 to 40 uh, youth CSOs or CBOs at the district level. We raise this alarm to the concern of the stakeholders. To make the training relevant, a needs assessment was conducted 
asking the youth leaders, government officials and other stakeholders about what skills needed to be developed. These findings informed design of the training interventions. So there were three main ways of imparting skills. We did carry out training, face-to-face -face training. Um, we also did face-to-face -face mentoring, but also uh, long-term mentoring over a period of six months. And then we also had the youth engaged in uh, public accountability forums, which we call the management forums. Florence Achuma is one of the two Apache District Youth Councillors. She is also the coordinator of Hours by Right in the district and was engaged in the project from the launch. So when they came, they said, what is the problem? They said, you know the problem here, we need projects. There is no direct projects for the youth. They said that, but are youth leaders okay? By then we thought that we were okay. We said that, okay. Then they asked that, how many motions have you moved in council? We say zero. <laughs> we even didn't know that it was important as a youth counselor to always keep moving motions on youth issues and then on other issues that matter in the society. 111 youth counselors from all the sub counties of the four selected districts underwent a five day training workshop. The training focused on leadership and personal development, soft skills like communication, presentation, basic research skills, and confidence. It also covered the political context for youth participation, decentralization, including the roles and responsibility of councillors, and the district planning and budgeting cycle, human rights, lobbying, advocacy, and leadership development. From the first training, it gave me, it, it like opened up uh, my face on what I am supposed to do, like how to, to, send, to, 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 to send the youth issues in council, how to, who are the relevant authorities as a youth leader that you are supposed to pass through? Pass through. Uh, before the existence of this program, it was virtually not known that uh, there was such a thing like youth councillors in, uh, in council meetings at sub-county and also district levels. Because they had no courage to speak, to lobby, and also advocate for the young people's interests. More staffs in health centers should be increased. That is the recruitment by the government. So that the management forums. Services according to the minimum goals. These are quarterly meetings bringing together the political leadership of the district and sub-counties, headed by the district chairperson, the technical personnel of the district, headed by the chief administrative officer, the resident district commissioner, CSOs and youth councillors, as well as chairpersons of district and sub-county youth councils. During the management forums, the district and sub-county leadership present the programs implemented and progress made. The youth and other stakeholders have the opportunity to ask questions on issues relating to their needs and interests. All the stakeholders are able to discuss and debate on development issues and give accountability to each other relating to their mandates. The management forums are easy to organize for us, interacting with the political team, then with the technical team, from the district, and then they put us together with the CSOs, managed it to make sure we prosper in that aspect there, whereby we could all go for one fora, and then the questions arise, people answer them, and the way they're answering shown prosperity for actual relationship. So now when they continue inviting them for this kind of training of the district council, they knew that, okay, this is just to advocate for the youth. So now, which means they need to give youth more power and authority than subjecting them to chase them away that don't come nearer to us because we are threatening our position. But now they are understood now that the, the youth are not core wives. And the word alone ours by right what a, was a very hard thing in our memory that ours by right. You need it whether it is a right to have it. It was not something easy to memorize, to think about it. But later on, when we started learning slowly by slowly, we, knew, we realized that it was a good uh, eye-opening topic and also information to the youth. We see now our youth may be becoming more confident as they approach on issues of governance. And uh, uh, probably we may see uh, more youth now offering themselves to come and participate 
in the governance. We are going to present this one. Armed with the knowledge and confidence, the youth have ably articulated their issues in the councils. Their voices cannot be ignored and their presence is strongly felt. In Apache, the youth councillors have successfully lobbied the district council for appointment of a youth councillor as chairperson of the production and marketing committee. They said that we need people to contest. They said, Florence, you go to finance. But to me, I had seen that finance, though it handles money, they, are not, they, they don't have many projects that they can give the youth. Me, I wanted a committee that I can influence the projects that are coming to take to my youth. Because besides the being the chairperson, I also need to serve my youth. So I said, if you people want to also now have a decision to take, because they, <laughs> they said choose a committee that you want. I said, for me, I only need production. If you can put me in this committee, I will accept to take the post. If not, I'd rather remain on the floor. So they said, go for production. I was nominated. No one competed with me, so I, I, I took the position. Yeah, so I, I take my position as the chairperson as a result of, of the second management forum. 31 billion. In addition to securing strategic posts in the district administration, a part youth councillor successfully lobbied council for increase in budget allocation for youth programs. At first, it was too difficult. Too difficult in the way that uh, in a year, all the financial year, we could just allocate only 2 million or 3 million for the youth budget. But now, we have changed. We have changed for the district. We can have a budget like for 15 million. Allocation for the youth programs has been a token. But at least now, these ones, you realize that even the youth programs at the lower local governments have gone as far as to the tune of 1 million. And some of these activities have been used mainly for other activities like uh, a free planting. Mm? Something which is enhancing the incomes of the what of the youth, not only like celebrating the youth day. The youth councillors in Palisa successfully lobbied the district council to have the district chairperson in charge of the youth nominated to sit on the planning committee. The chairperson is now in the planning committee, whereby he can also raise the issues of the of the youth when they are planning for the what for the district. As part of Hours by Right project, the civil society organizations were also trained to supplement youth efforts in their demand for consideration. We influence decisions through sectoral committees. As these sectoral committees sit, we go there and talk to them and raise issues of the young people. So we normally do it in the sectoral committees before they are passed in the council. And we also convince councillors and tell them that look here, you represent young people, but these are the issues of young people that affect all of you. In the history of, of Palisa, young people had never written a memorandum to the president and it, 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 it had never been assented to. But this time around, as a result of this project, uh, 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 the youth were able to write a memorandum that was presented to, to the president, raising their demands that they want the president of the Republic of Uganda to respond to. And uh, I must uh, assure that commitments are there. Uh, we are achieving a number of things. We are going to get a tractor, and uh, we are equally going to, to visit the president and uh, have a talk on one-to-one -one with the young people of Palisa. The youth now know that their demands for their entitlement goes beyond benefiting themselves to monitoring and evaluating the quality of social services meant for entire communities in which they live. This is Parombo Health Centre 3, Nebi District. The facility has just undergone tremendous transformation following years of mismanagement and neglect by the authorities. The health centre has, uh, has 19 staff, but of all of those staff, none would attend to inpatients and also outpatients at night hours. So. The, 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 the plight of the sick were only in the hands of Anaskari, who would administer drugs on patients, including uh, administering drips. During the implementation of Hours by Right project in the district, the youth councillors visited the health centre and realised the dire need to salvage it. As a leader, I decided to go back to my district, organise my youth leaders, my chairman, and the, the entire district, the RDCs, 
and uh, the rest of the, the district leaders, we talked about it, and then they actually gave us a go ahead as leaders to come back and monitor this place. Now, when we came here, we found the place was at a mess. <coughs> Basically, the compound was really filthy, dirty, including the toilets. Everything was dirty. The district leadership quickly mobilized resources, launched a general cleaning exercise, recruited new staff resulting into restoration of quality services at Parombo Health Centre 3. The, the community actually, in, in their local language, they say, Olarwa, uh, meaning uh, you have liberated us. This has been a fundamental shift from what it was then. If you came here by that time, and now you would say that uh, this one is a paradise. We looked at one major quality. That the mentoring program, expected an initiative for strengthening the leadership the skills of youth councillors by having individuals considered as role models in leadership to mentor the councillors. We asked the youth leaders to identify mentors, people they look up to in their communities, from the religious sector, from the political sector, from the business sector, or even government sector. So each one identified their need and the kind of person they were looking up to. And together they would develop a plan for mentoring over the six months. Can you tell us how you have progressed? What this have is a mentoring session. The mentor is the Palisa District Council now, speaker, can I, can I mentoring a group of mentees who chose him as their preferred mentor from the team of identified mentors. He has already been oriented to the mentorship program and today's session is on leadership qualities. I've been consulted on which qualities uh, would they, uh, the qualities they wish to have in order to be seen as effective leaders. And uh, alongside uh, being uh, good leaders, we saw the economic part of it being very important because a leader must first of all look at being economically sound. Then after being economically sound, a leader must have qualities. Beatrice Helen Apollot is a Palisa District Youth Councillor. The mentorship program transformed her economic livelihood from a mere village plastic container petrol vendor to an exemplary modest livestock farmer in her village. She rears turkeys, pigs and goats. When the, our melter, the British Council gave us, to take us to his place and showed us what she was having, it is the one who aspired me. Because he was not getting only money from the office work, but he was getting money from agriculture, palm tree and even citrus. Through the mentoring program, youth leaders are realizing the importance of having their personal income generating projects. Following her mentor's advice, Florence Achuma ventured into the lucrative business of buying and selling produce. Uh, the mentoring session also helped me to develop, empower myself economically. Because they say, yes, Florence, you can do very well in leadership politically, but when you don't have money, uh, after politics you will be no more. Or even as you continue with the politics, you will need money to sustain you, to make sure that you move around the district that you live. With an initial capital of 800,000, Florence buys maize and ground nuts directly from the local farmers and sells in bulk to clients who include NADs, schools and produce dealers from other urban centers. Already, her initial capital investment has made a 120% profit. She has a long-term reinvestment plan. When I was going for mentoring, because we were told to have a goal, my goal was to have an integrated farm where the youth I lead and other people can go and learn from. So as I talk now, I want to invest in this business so that I can buy land for myself. Because as I talk now, that's my, my major challenge. I can buy land where, where I can have my integrated farm. The positive effects of hours by right do not end at policy formulation and monitoring community entitlement levels. It resonates into groups and individual projects that have positively impacted the lives of youth. This is a meeting of some of the members of Nyabubare Development Association in Bushenyi District. 
a 31-member youth group that was formed in 2012. They are meeting to lay strategies for their coffee plantation project, which the group initiated following the British Council training. The members have planted 500 coffee trees on the two-acre piece of land, both using members' contributions. From the workshop, we used to get with them. Our minds were open and we said as the youth, we should not relax, wait for the government to give us what to do. We decided to put up this project, but the advice was from the British Council workshops we heard at the Crane Resort. For the Nyakabari Youth Tukwatanise 11 member group, through the mentoring process, they learned better farming practices, which they applied on their two acre tea plantation. They have also been able to manage their piggery project better. <laughs> Twenty-nine-year-old Nelson Otema is a farmer in Badongo village, Apache district. Fish farming is one of the various activities on his farm. He has stocked his pond with 120 catfish and hopes to harvest four months from now. Nelson was encouraged to start this project by his district youth councillor, who had successfully lobbied the council to avail NAD's projects for the youth. Uh, they, they give me some idea to, do, to write a request to NAD as they see coming here and said, you write this and then they, they may, they maybe they will help you. I can say the youth leaders used to cry that this, this government program is very difficult to access. We are the, the government has left us, we cannot get any, any government program. But after these people training us, they said that you people are crying. Does any of you have a guidelines of nuts? Do you know what it says? We say no. They said that what about yourself? Do you know? They say no. They ask us. They said from today, <laughs> go and get all the guidelines and then you read. You will see a provision for the youth in the in the what in the guidelines. I went and read. That is why youth participation in NADS has increased because we found that government has given 15 bonus for the youth. Any youth who want to participate in NADS, but this information was silent. The training from Ours by Right project has further exposed the youth to more avenues and opportunities intended for them. Youth leaders in Apache were able to rightfully demand for the district share of the Youth Capital Venture Fund provided by government. Our youth were going to the bank and being shot at or getting stranded. So when we realized this, we went to the Stanwick Bank officials, we told them now this information has a gap. The youth are not understanding which step are they supposed to take and what action are they supposed to what to take. Then we move around with them to mobilize the youth for the Youth Capital Venture Fund. Again, we task them to move to go down to the villages to go and open the accounts for what for youth. Because we are we realized in the mobilization the youth didn't have accounts, even though others had businesses. So for now, as I talk, we have 20 to 15 to 20 youth who have benefited from the Youth Capital Venture Fund. 30-year-old Jasper Onapa is one of the beneficiaries of the Youth Capital Venture Fund. He runs a metal fabrication workshop in a patch <laughs> municipality. In 2012, following the Youth Councillor's mobilization, Jasper accessed a 4 million Uganda shilling loan, which he injected into his business to recapitalize and expand it. I can now go and bring my material in large quantity. I'm, I'm even selling it to other people. And again, I'm also picking it, using it at my home. And that part of money has also helped me to buy the, what, the generator for welding. In Palisa, the district administration has realized the need to invest in human resource. Florence Achanit is a second year medical student at the Kampala International University Medical School. She is doing a ward round at Palisa General Hospital as she practices nursing skills. Florence is one of the six students who are studying medicine under the Palisa Student Scholarship Scheme. So during my holidays, I come to the hospital, do ward rounds, 
practice the nursing procedures, hoping the doctors around, and hope my community. I always uh, actually I feel I should be here. They have been the ones sponsoring me. I would have seen me through up to where I am. So I have a responsibility to pay them back. This initiative was conceived by UNET, who successfully sold it to the district council, ensuring its adoption. We were able to lobby for the bursary scheme, the district bursary scheme, of which this scheme is helping young people. They need the students who are bright. And uh, this was as a result of, of ours by right project. And I must say, it was majorly as a result of the management forums that we were conducting. As the project came to a close, the idea of organizing exchange visits among youth councillors from the four districts was considered for learning purposes. This is a delegation of Apache youth councillors visiting their counterparts in Nebi district. It is one of the two exchange visits that UNET and the British Council was able to organize. The, the idea behind the exchange visits is, is for purposes of exper experiential learning, uh, forming networks beyond the district. We know that we, we know the number of success stories uh, under this project that we feel our, our colleagues from Apache need to come and learn what, what worked well in, in Nebi district and what work didn't work well the other side and how can the two learn from each other. So it's more of an exper experiential learning and also exposing uh, our, our colleagues in Apache, just beyond Apache district. After the project's two years, ours by rights objective of building UNET staff capacity to train and provide support to their members was significantly realized. We have benefited as staffs who have been working on this project. First of all, in terms of um, um, understanding the complexities of working on European funded projects, we have also had staff who have been coached and mentored under the different leadership capacity building programs within this project. And our human resources overall is different from where it was two years back. No doubt, Hours by Right project succeeded in achieving its core intended objectives of empowering youth to actively engage in issues that affect them and demand accountability and also developing a strong network to advance their position. We're very happy with um, how the project has developed. We're very happy with what the project has achieved in many areas. What we're seeing is um, young people in the project areas becoming more organised, if you like, um, working together more than they were before. That gives them a kind of sense of identity, a sense of belonging, and it enables them to have that platform to participate in this uh, governance process, if you like, which perhaps they didn't have before. Undoubtedly, the success of Ours by Right largely depended on the local council's appreciation and accepting to fully participate and listen to the youth's voices, and most importantly, adopting their positive demands and entitlements.